Hello and welcome to OEN Engage. Thank you for joining us for today's session, Open Pedagogy Resources Overview. My name is Tanya Groves and I'm the Director of Educational Programs at the OEN. Couple of housekeeping items first. Uh, we kicked off the week with the OEN land acknowledgement and community norms. If you'd like to review them, thank you, Barb, for putting them in the chat. Um, we also welcome you to share your local land acknowledgement in the chat if you'd wish to do so, or you can visit the Native Land Digital site to learn about the lands that our community members inhabit and dig deeper into our relationships with their heritage, the resources that they share, and how we can actively be a part of a better future moving forward. I am presenting to you today on the unceded Dakota lands of St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, this session is being recorded to benefit those in our community who are unable to attend, and links will be shared out after the event, including slide decks. Uh, if you have comments or questions during the session, you don't really have to submit them via the chat because it's a pretty small group. So if you'd like to do the chat, that's okay. But if you want to unmute, that's fine too. We are not a super formal group. Um, and now please join me in welcoming today's co-presenters. Uh, David Tully, Librarian for Student Success and Affordability at the North Carolina State University Library System. Um, he's also one of our presenters. He's on our steering committee, and he's an instructor for their Certificate in Open Educational Practices. And we're dreaming up other ways for him to volunteer his time. <laughs> um, Melissa Williams, Instructional Designer for the Minnesota State System and a faithful attender of our Open Pedagogy Community of Practice, as well as a coffee chum to me. Um, and Jamie Whitman, Open Educational Practices Specialist at the OEN and Technology and Mentee Master. So, so glad for those skills um, of hers. And you know what? Sorry, I'm supposed to be advancing slides here too. <laughs> so all of that is there as well. And thanks, Barb, for, for being the chat monitor. I am going to turn it over to, um, I think it's Jamie. Is that right? Or is it David? I think it's me, yeah. All right, thanks, Jamie. Yep. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, so we're basically just going to do a review of a couple of our resources that we have around open pedagogy. Uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is the Open Pedagogy Learning Circle. Uh, each fall and spring semester, the OEN facilitates an Open Pedagogy Learning Circle. Uh, this is facilitated by myself. The pilot was done by Amanda Larson. Uh, from the Ohio State University. She designed the curriculum. And since the pilot, we've been able to iterate on the curriculum based on the two other cohorts that we've had. Uh, the Learning Circle uh, is an opportunity for both faculty and faculty support folks to create community and join one another in learning about open pedagogy. And we cover a lot of different topics in uh, seven weeks, all in seven one-hour sessions, uh, which culminates with a showcase session where partic participants get to present their Learning Circle project. So for our instructors, they are taking a current assignment that they have and redesigning it into a renewable assignment. And our instructor support folks are creating a digital learning object uh, for an audience of their choosing on a topic uh, that we discuss throughout the seven weeks. Um, so we found this to be a really engaging and collaborative and meaningful experience uh, to be able to learn from each other in our different roles. And we've had such really good, robust discussions center on open pedagogy. Uh, there is a link for our interest list. Uh, like I said, we offer this once a semester in the fall and in the spring. Uh, so the next will be this upcoming fall uh, 2024. So if you're interested, uh, please fill out the uh, interest list uh, that Barb has just put into the chat. Thanks, Barb. And Tanya, if we could go to the next slide, please. Uh, this is our open pedagogy portal. This is both a repository and a repertory for real life examples of renewable assignments, student work product, and teaching and learning resources about open pedagogy. It's designed to be able to be browsed by discipline. Uh, if you go to it, you will notice that not all the disciplines listed under that area have uh, any content quite yet. We're still building this out. Uh, so if you or anyone you know have any um, open pedagogy work that they'd like to have featured on this, uh, please use the submit form that's on the portal as well um, so we can start building this out and really make this a robust resource. Uh, but you can also search by keywords. 
Um, and uh, we have a lot of teaching and learning resources as well. So infographics that have come out of our learning circle, presentations that have come out of our learning circle um, that can help you start having these conversations with your colleagues uh, in addition to those renewable assignments and some student work product that folks have submitted. So these are real student assignments that have been openly licensed uh, that you can use to share with your own students so they can see the type of work that students are doing in this um, when they're engaging in open pedagogy. Um, and like I said, we hope in time that it will become a really robust directory of open pedagogy work and be a place to learn, adapt, remix, and share that work. And I think this is the last one you'll hear from me, and this is the Open Pedagogy Student Toolkit. Uh, it is intended uh, as a guide for students who are engaging in open pedagogy. Um, it's a resource for faculty who are using open pedagogy um, as a way that they can scaffold conversations uh, around open ped with their students, and so they can really appropriately prepare them for working in the open. Um, this is it breaks down open pedagogy into really uh, digestible terms for students, um, helps them understand their own intellectual property rights, um, as well as what working in the open is um, and what that means for them and their work. And um, it is both available in press books to read online. You can download it. Uh, it's also available in Manifold, which there is a link to, as well as a Google Doc. So you can take it and copy it and use it how you need and adapt it how you need to um, in Google Docs, one of the simplest forms of being able to share these resources. Uh, so please feel free to adapt it for your own courses um, and let us know if you happen to be using it. Thanks. Um, and I'll just stop and say, well, for all these resources, they were all kind of born out of a strategic discussion um, about three years ago. Um, and so all of these things came to be because our community members were saying, we want more open ped resources um, and professional development opportunities uh, that we can be sharing with our faculty. Um, so one of the first things we did was to create a workshop um, an intro to open pedagogy workshop, and then of course to transform that into a train the trainer. Um, so this particular workshop seeks to assist those who wish to introduce open ped to other educators in an engaging way. The workshop contains the definition or definitions really of open ped if you saw it today, concrete examples of open pedagogy, the benefits of open pedagogy, various ways to get involved with it, including viewing a video given from the perspective of an instructor, librarian, and copyright expert, uh, the possibility of enrolling in a seven week long open ped learning circle through enrollment in the certificate in open education, in educational practices, et cetera. And then through viewing and submitting examples to the open ped portal. So we have, I think, I think today was only the second time. Um, so if you were there and you have feedback, Jamie and I would love to hear your feedback. The first time we felt like we uh, went over, we, we didn't have enough and we went short and today we went over. So, you know, that's how it is when you're piloting things. Um, but we have created these resources, of course, openly licensed so that you can take it and make it into what you need um, as you're delivering these workshops for your faculty. Uh, next, I will turn it over to Melissa, who's going to talk about the community of practice. Awesome. Okay. Um, I don't know. Yep. Here we go. All right. So the community of practice, and correct me if I'm mistaken about this, but I, I at least became aware of it, and I think it emerged from conversations at last year's OEN Engage. Uh, we had gone through the Train the Trainer Open Pedagogy Workshop, and a lot of us were saying, hey, what else do you know, or I'd love to hear more about this. And um, we ended up putting this together. We talked about how did we want this to, to look. And what we ended up with was um, basically a once in a, a month kind of almost like a lunch and learn. Um, I think currently it's like the third or last Wednesday um, around noon central. And it's very um, low structure, but we have some kind of key principles. As you can see, we have our community um, norms that are listed here. Um, what we typically do in a session is um, we, ahead of time, we identify a conversation we'd like to have, um, but we come in, we sort of introduce ourselves so we know who's where doing what, who's part of the, you know, to give us some context um, for who we're talking with. Um, 
And so once we've established that community, we then um, cover our topic. The topic can be, you know, it could be about equity practices um, in open pedagogy. It could be like policy navigation. We've talked about things like intellectual property rights for students and what do you need to do? How do you prepare them? Resources. Um, or somebody often will bring in a project that they've done and say, hey, I want some feedback on this. What is it missing? What's What works? Uh, what kinds of questions do you have so that we can hone the work that we're doing? Um, it's um, We have kind of a centralized resource, um, uh, a Google Doc where we capture the notes so people can go back and look at the you know, reference links or resources that were shared. We have a rotating facilitator and scribe, but it's it's very democratic. Like people will pop it and add something that maybe the scribe didn't add in. Um, so it's a it's a very comfortable and very friendly and um, open and welcoming um, space. The things that I really value about it are those crowdsourcing techniques, right? Um, uh, crowdsourcing of like techniques, tools, resources, um, uh, helping us understand like. I don't know, maybe norm, like where are we at my institution? What does it look like elsewhere? Am I kind of along with the flow with how this is developing and um, nationally and internationally? Um, I, so many of us are siloed. We work, you know, we're a department of one or maybe we have three people we work with. So it's really wonderful to have that kind of bigger community in, in that front. Um, and having that informed feedback from people who are doing the same kind of work you're doing, that's hard to obtain sometimes when you don't have someone else doing this kind of work at your institutions. So that's been great. Um, but I also, something I really value is the kind of the very proactive and intentional effort to not just talk about equity in our work, but practice equity in that space. And so those community more norms really matter, but I also see that being practiced. Um, you know, uh, people looking to ensure everyone's included in the conversation, that we're hearing people's needs and concerns. And sometimes we just come in and go, this bummer of a thing happened and people commiserate. That's wonderful too. Um, I think my favorite moment, just to give you one specific example is, um, something I had never considered until people started talking about it in the group, which was um, the challenge we have when people generate these projects and we ask our students to put something out in a public space and then it never gets updated. And it sits out there kind of like space junk, you know, littering the internet. Um, and it's one more thing that people might find and go, well, that was cool, but it's super out of date now. So we had a conversation about how do we ensure that open pedagogy projects that we develop are set up for sustainability and utility and continue to be, remain relevant and for not just our students, but um, other intended audiences, our community um, beyond the classroom. So that was a wonderful thing and really helped me think about how would I structure the work that I'm doing as I build these kinds of assignments. So join us. It is absolutely the highlight of my day when I get to do these things. And uh, yeah, I think that's it on my end. And my dog says hi. Sorry about that. Okay, thank you, Melissa. Um, so I have the pleasure, really, of providing an overview of OEN's Certificate in Open Educational Practices. Um, this is a really unique program, which actually pairs together faculty um, with librarians from their own institution. And it provides them, really, with uh, a facilitated online course about open educational practices. So I think the idea really is that participants um, are inspired, they're trained, and then they leave empowered to implement an open pedagogy project on their own campus. So I myself had the privilege of being a facilitator in the current iteration of this program. And I find it just incredibly rewarding, just supporting instructors and librarians from different colleges sort of all around the country um, and Canada. <laughs> And arguably, the best part of the program, I think, is is meeting people, um, sharing and borrowing ideas and just really feeling inspired by what everybody is working on. And the program really does produce some, some truly amazing transformations in curriculum through the power of open pedagogy. So this past spring, um, this looks like a nine week, nine week online course. I think sort of four to six hours is the is the sort of, you know, estimated time commitment per week. Interaction is usually asynchronous with the occasional synchronous meeting. Um, once you get past the spring semester, during the summer, this is an opportunity as a participant to sort of refine your curriculum um, based upon the plan that you've created during the spring element, um, during the online element during the spring. 
And then looking ahead to the fall, you'll look to implement that, that open pedagogy project, revised curriculum, um, but still with the support of the, the instructional team behind you and your partner. If you're interested in a, a course like this, in terms of applicant criteria, we, we really look for sort of five things. The first one uh, naturally would be an interest in open education. Um, the second one is really desire to make learning more equitable and inclusive. The third is having the bandwidth to commit to what equates to a year long program um, through spring, summer and fall. A desire to improve the curriculum or revise it um, to, to incorporate an open intervention and, of course, having um, agency in which to do so. And also then the ability to implement that, that intervention the following academic year. So in terms of being a participant, you'll have access to this supportive community of educators that we that we can build around you who are also passionate about open education. In terms of what you'll be doing, you'll be engaging in discussions, um, you'll be sharing your own experiences, and you'll be collaborating, uh, you and your, your partner, your librarian um, partner or instructor, depending upon if you're the librarian that I'm talking to, um, on projects that will uh, help you apply what you've learned into your own teaching. So by the end of the program, the idea would be that not only do you have a, a much deeper understanding of open educational practices, but you'll also have this sort of port portfolio of work really that demonstrates your ability to create and implement OEP. So you'll receive a certificate, which is of course a great and valuable addition to your professional development. Um, but I think the certificate program is really more than a credential as well. It's really like this, this, this a journey essentially towards becoming an advocate for open education and empowering you ultimately to, to make a significant impact um, on students at your own institution. So um, if somebody hasn't already, I will drop a link into the chat. Um, of, of course, the, the application for the current cohort is closed, but if you'd like to take a, a closer look at the curriculum, we do have the public version available on, on our, one of our web pages, and you can now sign up for the 2025 interest list and receive an email in fall of this year um, with specifics on what that will look like. Um, and I will drop that uh, link into the chat in just a moment as well. Thank you, David and Melissa and Jamie for sharing um, all about the resources um, and the group that's meeting. Um, if you want to learn more, you can certainly go to our website. Uh, we do have an open pedagogy uh, web page within our website, or the community hub has all of these resources as well, if that's a place you'd like to visit. Um, um, so before we take questions, um, thanks again, Jamie, David, and Melissa for sharing all these things. Um, any questions and feel free to unmute or put in the chat any questions about um, any of these resources or maybe suggestions for resources that have yet to be created. Someone pointed out earlier that, you know, and we, we knew this, that PubPub is going away, um, at least the free version. So we are going to have to figure out what we do with the portal, the open pedagogy portal. So we do not have an answer for that. We have not had a chance to talk about it since we got the news, uh, but we will be figuring out what to do with that. The, the open pedagogy portal will not be going away. <clears throat> Any other questions or suggestions? Rajiv. Oh, hi, Rajiv. Uh, one area I'm thinking about is when a department gets together to engage in curriculum mapping and a more programmatic approach to embracing open pedagogy. Guidance to support this would be useful. I love that whole idea, the concept um, of kind of engaging departmentally. Um, in an earlier in our community action session, um, Stephen Bell was suggesting that he thinks that the OEN might consider reaching out to states too, you know, a, a proactive outreach to say, what what do you need from us? How how might, how might we assist you? So I thought that was interesting. Um, is anyone doing anything like this? Rajiv, are you doing this at your institution already a little bit? <laughs> so 
sorry, took me a second to grab my headset. Um, yeah, I do have the the joy of working with some um, some departments at my institution that are looking to do this uh, in interesting areas, like for um, uh, the early childhood education program, for example, right? So you've got a, a group of really progressive educators who are interested in doing something collaboratively. So for me, it's interesting because we take the usual techniques of curriculum mapping, but really are thinking about uh, that vertical integration and scaffolding in a way that layers on uh, and sometimes in an iterative process, when you think about e-portfolios or other kinds of things uh, across the program. So I think it's just a slightly different approach. So I'm thinking about how to, uh, uh, in this case, modify the usual cross-disciplinary, um, you know, cross-pollination that happens when you bring pe together people from different disciplines to actually having the same discipline, but having, having them think about this in a totally different way. So it, it may just be some additional considerations that I'm thinking of and reflecting on that would be useful to share as we as we flesh this out. I love that. Um, and two, I'm wondering if uh, accreditors like the Higher Learning Commission um, and other um, accrediting bodies are ready to hear now about open pedagogy. Um, is it time to be presenting at some of those conferences? And maybe some of those are occurring. Um, I check HLC's conference list pretty closely every year, and I haven't really seen it. So it kind of makes me wonder if if it's if we're ready now to start sharing some of this at the higher levels to see it kind of filter down. Um, I love that uh, the curriculum mapping suggestion, though. Thank you for that idea. And we are going to have to think about how we might be able to support that. Uh, any other suggestions, questions? Hi, this is Mandy. I don't know if you can hear me. I can hear you, Mandy. Hi. Um, apologies if this has already come up in this session or a previous one, but um, in the session this morning with the open pedagogy run through, we were talking a little bit about how it would help to have just like um, curriculum development knowledge or instructional design knowledge. So I don't know if there's a way to include just some basic resources about that somewhere in the open pedagogy content, even just for the librarians and others who are supporting faculty doing this work. I think that's a wonderful suggestion. And um, we're doing some IMLS interviews. Um, so there's some people in the room I think we've probably interviewed. Um, but it's very interesting talking to open ed leaders who have instructional design support or, for instance, who have an open pedagogy librarian versus those who don't. Um, and so I, I like the kind of idea of plugging in maybe kind of higher level pieces for some of these places so that you can plug and play. OK, we don't have an instructional designer, so we're going to plug in this. We don't have an open ped librarian, so we're going to plug this in. And so um, thanks for that suggestion, Mandy. I think that's a good idea. And by the way, um, any of the folks in the room, please feel free to unmute uh, and, and, and chime in. Um, Annette, we are in the process of revising, revising all of our teaching licensure courses due to new st state standards. We have talked about OER, OEP, and all of our new courses, but don't have a plan on how to do this. Fall work, perhaps. Um, and then open pedagogy is crucial for a learner agency. So yes, instructional design goes hand in hand. Agreed. Uh, another interesting thing as we're interviewing these folks is um, figuring out um, of those who are closely um, connected somehow to the Center for Teaching and Learning or whatever they call it, Center for Teaching Excellence, um, and how those um, initiatives um, are, are mapped out and scaffolded as opposed to those who don't, who, who don't have that type of collaboration. So there's no one right way, but um, I just love the idea of baking more in uh, to some of the things we're offering to help help people. So thank you for that. Uh, any other suggestions, questions, concerns? Melissa, do you have anything to say about, a way to put you on the spot, about instructional design and open pedagogy? Well, I think, Mandy, it was the person, we were talking about that, right? The struggle. That I, yes. It's, it's so great, by the way, to see people understand, like, what we do as instructional designers and why it's helpful and important. But the other piece um, is it's, it's true that 
were chronically understaffed. There are very few IDs I know who are working with a team at the capacity that we, I feel like we need. Um, that's, it, it's a continual struggle. I, I, I am curious. I like this idea, Mandy, of kind of like very simple kind of basics of here's how you design or like some, some kind of quick ways to ensure that you have those basics in place. Um, but I want to defer back to the OEN folks because you may have some of that stuff either in some of your workshop resources and slides or, you know, something else. But I will also say I, it, it, I could be wrong about this, but it feels like the ID crowd, I would say there's a subset of us that's real that are really engaged with like uh, open education and then even a smaller group with open pedagogy. So yeah, I, 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 it'd be interesting to see like the intersection of that and who can help and in, in what we would want to do in, in that context too. I'm sorry, that was a little rambly. I hope that was okay. No, not rambly at all. Um, I, you know, we do bake UDL principles and some into some of our um, programs, but I don't know that we've ever really, we've never, at least to my knowledge, um, worked with an instructional designer um, to say, okay, what pieces would you add to this when you're considering redesigning curriculum? So I actually love that. Um, and how handy, Melissa, <laughs> that you're an instructional designer and that we have friends in this community who are instructional designers. It's, it's heartening. Uh, Sarah says for programs like the OEP certification program, yes. Is it only librarians and faculty that are able to participate? No, um, originally because it was IMLS funded, we had to keep it uh, within a particular scope. Um, at her institution, the IT and libraries are fused and we participate in a lot of similar activities. Um, so no, um, we are now completely open to a faculty member partnering with an instructional designer or whomever. Um, and because the IMLS funded uh, funding is now um, an, at an end, uh, we are what, ready to move forward and, and open up the gates a little bit more, and it makes perfect sense. Um, we're already doing that in the learning circles where kind of anybody, an instructional designer, a librarian, center for teaching and learning staff, you know, whatever. So um, in the certificate program, we are broadening that. I hope that helps. I got a second master's in instructional design because I wanted to make sure that as I help faculty redesign their courses, around open principles that they maintain the learning outcomes and academic engagement. That's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I follow the EDUCAI's uh, ID listserv. I've never seen any questions about or discussion related to open pedagogy there, perhaps a list for some outreach to create awareness about OAN resources. I was kind of wondering, Stephen, I haven't been to even a, um, a what Eli, I think, is the subset of Educause, um, and I haven't been to any of those uh, conferences in a really long time, so I need to plug back into that. So thank you for that suggestion. Um, we still have time, uh, but I'm also happy to give time back to you in your Thursday afternoon. So um, any other questions or suggestions, concerns? And thanks for all of these suggestions. It's going to give us some pathways to follow when we get done with Engage. So this is awesome. Oh, thank you for sharing. Um, Jennifer shared a great open tool for course design evaluation in the chat. Okay, then thank you again, Jamie, David, and Melissa so much. I appreciate your helping to share about all the great open ped resources and opportunities that OEN offers. Thank you. Uh, folks in attendance for sharing some of the needs you have and some of um, the concerns that you share because it can help us chart a, a different path to to maybe address some of those. Thank you everyone for joining us. If today's session sparked ideas, questions, or thoughts, we encourage you to continue the conversation in the Google group or to reach out to our team. Thanks again, um, all of you for joining us and we hope that you have a great rest of the day.